come with us for an Islamic history tour in Andalusia, Spain. So our first stop was Cordoba. It actually was the capital of Islamic Spain in the 10th century and it was an absolutely buzzing place for education and learning. We just walked around quite a bit, took in a few of the sites within the Jewish quarter, also saw Ibn Hazm's statue and Ibn Hazm was one of the most prominent Andalusian scholars at the time and my husband is a huge fan so we did end up staying there for a little bit and talking about that. We then just walked around the narrow streets. It's such a beautiful city and there's just so much to take in. The next morning we headed to the Mosque Cathedral of Cordoba. This was once one of the most exquisite and largest mosques in the whole of Europe. And it's now a fully functioning cathedral, but it's so beautiful to look inside and kind of see lots of the history. The arches that you can see are contrasting bricks and the symmetry is mathematically like amazing, astonishing. Although it's closed off now, you can still see the chambers of the mihrab, which is where the imam used to stand and lead the prayer um, during the Muslim time. So yeah, it's really beautiful to see history and it was just such an amazing um, place to go and visit and learn more about. We then headed to Seville. So our next stop was Sevilla. And the first place we stopped at, off at was the Alcazar of Seville. Again, there's a lot of cultural and Islamic kind of history here. Um, it is a direct replica of the Granada's Alhambra, um, the courtyard area. So it's really stunning to see. It's a smaller version of um, the Alhambra. So if you are not going to Granada, it's a good place to go and check it out. You just see Arabic inscription everywhere, absolutely everywhere. There are so many constant reminders of Allah and God and remembrance. You honestly can't forget religion and faith when you're in these buildings. And, and it's a peek into what it used to be like. I then passed by the University of Seville, of course, it happened to find me. Imagine attending university as a student when it looks this beautiful. Everything was just architecturally astonishing we then took a night river cruise along the river and took in the sights uh, during sunset and beyond and then we just walked around a bit enjoyed the nightlife here which is really good and we headed back to the hotel we're only in seville for one night and i do wish that we extended our trip in seville i would definitely recommend adding a bit more time in seville there is a lot that you can see and do here so many narrow streets that you can just walk down and get lost in so yeah definitely adding another day here would have been something i would have preferred to spending more time in granada this trip was actually mid-June, which was a good time to travel. It was a bit warm, so I'd recommend spending the morning out as early as possible, midday indoors to just kind of kind of recoup and rest up and then spending the afternoon and late evening outside. And then our next stop was to Granada, of course, and we were here for a few more days. And our first stop was at the hotel. We just checked our bags in. Our first stop in Granada was to check out the sunset. And one of the best places that you can go and check out the sunset is this area called Mirador de San Nicolas. And this has an amazing viewpoint. Now, a little top tip. If you do go there firstly, try to walk it if you can. There are amazing views all the way up, so it's definitely worth it. But there's also a bus if you have to. But a top tip is to go to the masjid. The mosque is literally next door, that location, and it has the exact same view except it is less restricted. So um, only Muslims can be there during the time of prayer. Otherwise, anyone can be in that area. So it's a lot quieter. There isn't any music or dancing. It's just very peaceful and calm. And you're literally opposite the Alhambra. So you can see the change from day to night. And again, we walked all the way down and we headed to this place that was a vegan spot for dinner. Really yummy food. It did not taste like it had no meat. Um, very delicious. And I'd highly recommend it if you're looking for somewhere to eat that um, does not include meat. The next day, the weather was a bit different in Granada. I was very shocked actually how different the weather is um, in Seville and Cordoba compared to Granada. It was absolutely pouring down with rain this morning and I was not prepared for that at all. Um, so the first thing we did was we headed to Stories for breakfast and everything just tastes so fresh. The most basic baguette just tasted absolutely delicious. We checked into the Hotel Alhambra Palace, which is an absolutely beautiful hotel placed right next to the Alhambra, which was in fact for us ideal as we were gonna visit there that exact day inside is you know tries to replicate the designs of the alhambra palace of course and it's just so lovely to be there i sat down for a little while 
did a bit of work, caught up with some emails, even though this was not a work trip, but you know me. Just did a quick little half an hour and um, yeah, and then we headed to the Alhambra and this was an, this is my highlight. This is the highlight of my life. I am not going to forget 2023 because I visited the Alhambra in 2023. This palace left me speechless on so many occasions how much detail there is in every single letter on the pillars or on the arches or on the borders every single word and every single letter and design has a meaning and everything kind of comes back to the remembrance of god which i think says a lot to sort of the people of that time the inspiration for all the architecture that you see here is actually the holy quran so they're looking at the descriptions of heaven so including things like fountains pillars courtyards palm trees and everything you see here is meant to be a replication of what heaven could look like by the time we got back it was a bit late and we called it a night the next morning was a bit brighter wasn't as gloomy as it was the day before and we just walked around and we found this place for breakfast called amazonica they had again really good food food here is amazing don't get hotel food for breakfast we didn't get breakfast in the hotels just because we thought there's just such good food here something that i really fell in love with in andalusia in general is that you really don't have to spend any money to have a good time here just walking around taking in the small things the everyday things that they just pass by like the oranges that have fallen from the orange tree and like this beautiful peacock in this free park just walking around itself is such a beautiful experience i also found this book in a bookstore and it went through every single letter and word and phrase that was written in the alhambra and i just found it so fascinating and i honestly was just i was just stuck reading this book for ages again so many hills if you're if you don't like walking then you probably struggle this place quickly became our favorite bakery so because this was our last night we wanted to have a little date night and we just went to the hotel restaurant it's a really good restaurant and we had such good food the service was amazing we got pasta we got a salad we got a soup yeah, it was just so good and i think it was a nice way to kind of end the trip and honestly this is one of the, my favorite trips that i've ever been on I really enjoyed going to Andalusia and seeing the history, seeing the architecture. It left me speechless on so many occasions. And if you do end up traveling and visiting yourself, then definitely take the time to research what it is that you're looking at and to enjoy it. And this will help you enjoy it even more.